This video is brought to you by MetaQuest Plus, the ultimate subscription service for MetaQuest 3S owners. You can get access to a growing library of over 20 games with new titles added every month with MetaQuest Plus. And as a new MetaQuest 3S owner, you'll receive a free three month trial of MetaQuest Plus. And existing owners can try out the service for free for one month. And you'll also get special perks and discounts that'll help you save some money on the titles you're sure to love. So don't miss out on the future of gaming in VR. Try MetaQuest Plus today. Welcome to Figure Feedback, my name is Jeremy. So let's talk about nylon filament. Nylon is something that's really, really cool to print with if you can get it to print in the first place. And it has a lot of really great qualities about it. It's strong, it's resistant, it feels really good in the hand. It's nice and smooth, and it can also help to make your prints look less like they came off a 3D printer and something that was you know, produced through some other means because it does a great job at hiding those layer lines. But the problem with nylon filament is it can be pretty tough to print with. So I'm gonna tell you about a couple of different nylon filaments that I've used and I've tried to print personally in this Flash Forge Adventure 5M Pro and some things that I learned and gleaned along the way in hopes that maybe if you wanna print nylon filament, you can take some of the things that I experienced and use it to your advantage. Now, first of all, Nylon filament is extremely hygroscopic. That means that it loves to just drink moisture from the air. And, you know, filament and water, they are not a good mix. So if you want to print with nylon, you have to dry it first. Highly, highly recommended that you dry it first. So you need a filament dryer or at least some way to dry the filament. So when I got this nylon filament, I dried it in this Sunlu filament dryer over here. This is their newest filament dryer. It's not out yet as I record this video, and I'm not gonna talk about it here today. I'm gonna have another video dedicated to this filament dryer. But the whole point of it is, is what I use to dry the nylon filament. And I've got a couple different types of nylon filament that I used in here. Now, this is the first one. Both of these are from Sunlu, but you know, you can get nylon filament from other people as well. So here's the first one. This is their Easy PA. PA is nylon. So this is supposed to be an easier filament to print. It's still nylon, but they've done some things to it to make it easier to print, to help it avoid things that it loves to do, such as warping. And the second nylon filament that I have in this dryer here is nylon carbon fiber. So this is PA12-CF. So basically what they've done is they've taken some carbon fiber powders most likely and mixed it in with this filament. And by doing that, it also makes it easier to print and it also gives it a different texture to it. And that just kind of brings into another element that you definitely need to be aware of because while printing regular nylon is difficult to do, printing with the carbon fiber nylon is a little bit easier in my experience, but it is abrasive as heck, meaning this filament has these carbon fibers in it, so it's really, really rough. So you need to have a hardened steel nozzle to push this through, and really preferably hardened steel extruder gears as well, so that this filament does not just wear those things down really quickly if you plan on printing with this a lot. So if you do wanna print with nylon, just make sure that your gear is up to the task if you're gonna print with carbon fiber and nylon, really, because it can be pretty tough. Nylon also has to be printed at some pretty high temperatures. So in order for me to print, I had to take my bed temperature up to 110 degrees Celsius, and on the hot end, 275 degrees Celsius seemed to be a nice sweet spot for me. And having a heated chamber is also something that you really, really, really should have. Now, this printer, the 5M Pro, it doesn't have a heated chamber, at least not actively. It's a passive heated chamber, which means that the bed and its heat is making everything nice and toasty in there. And then even from the nozzle, it's up to a high temperature, that heat can also contribute to it as well. But it doesn't have a heater 
in it. So because of that, in my experience, it's made things a, probably a little bit more difficult than it would have been if I had a printer that has an actual integrated heated chamber. Let me show you some examples here. Now, first, this is the easy PA, the easy nylon filament. In fact, prior to this, I tried printing with just some regular good old fashioned nylon and I just could not get it to work. It kept warping. It's so deceptive. It seems like it's going to start off pretty good, but then you come back and check on it and the whole thing is just eh, and it's off the bed and your print is ruined. But this is the easy PA. This is a failed print, but if you can just take a look at it, it is just so, so smooth. And I dare you to find some layer lines in this print here. You will be hard pressed to find it because just the texture of it, it just makes it so smooth. It's a little bit shimmery and oh man, it's just so great. It's so great. But it warped right off of the bed. I tried this a few different times, about three or four times with this piece. And every time it got to about 66% and then it just wants to warp. And you can just kind of hear it right there as I'm just poking at it. So that wasn't working out too well for me, but the internet says that nylon carbon fiber is easier to print. So I went with that instead. I managed to print myself a couple of these side pieces for my Space Marine helmet here that printed out just fine. But just because it's nylon carbon fiber doesn't mean that it is impossible to warp. Hence, this failed print right here. Look how warped this got. I was actually pretty shocked. So I had this down on the bed. It didn't even print a whole lot of layers. This is still pretty thin. And then both sides just curled right up. And that's just the thing about nylon, you know, it just likes to warp. And I can't specifically point out something that I've done differently to give me complete success. It just happens. Sometimes things print perfectly. And then sometimes it just says, nah, I don't feel like doing it right now. You need to try again. But I did put some um, adhesive on the bed to help it out. And I think that really did help make a difference in some cases, but in other cases it did not work at all, you know, kind of like this. But when you get nylon to print successfully, it's great for having some things that are functional and strong, such as this thing right here that I printed with the nylon carbon fiber. Now the nylon carbon fiber is grittier and you can just feel it and you can hear it. Listen to this. It just feels and sounds grittier. And then here's the smooth one. And the rough one. So the feel of this, is not as good as just the regular nylon or the easy nylon. So if you don't mind a little bit of grit in your texture for your objects, then uh, you know carbon fiber will be the way to go. This is a guitar stand printed in a couple of different pieces, no support necessary. I'll leave a link in the description to where you can find it. And this is how it works. It just comes in two pieces like this. It has these slots already cut out and then you just put them together, slot them in just like this. It is a nice, perfect fit. And this thing is printed with 15% infill and it is strong. And best of all, it works. Because when it comes to something like a guitar stand, you do not want it to be warping and giving you all kinds of problems when the temperature gets hotter and when it gets colder and stuff like that, like PLA might give you depending on where you live. But for this, all I gotta do is just set this down and it is just a really great option. I got these guitar stands that are much bigger than this. You know, they're taller and they take up more space, but something like this, not only can you break this down and put it in a bag or something and take it with you, especially if, you know, if you're traveling with an instrument or something, but even if you just wanted to just keep it in a room or something like that, it fits in really, really cool, really, really well. It's, turn this around on the back so you can get a look at it. That's what it looks like from the back. And it just stands the guitar up straight. It doesn't lean back. You don't have to worry about any of those uh, spring mechanisms to kind of keep it in place. It's just a really, really cool functional print. And this is something that I would definitely 
trust the nylon filament too because it's just so resistant to like different temperature changes and everything and it's so strong and it's just a great look it fits in so well so if you want to print things that are just more functional i'm not talking about like figurines or little decorations and stuff that you put around the house but just things that you actually are going to use that you need it to hold up to some stress you need it to be able to be durable I highly recommend that you check out some nylon filament and if you have trouble with it the nylon carbon fiber because even though it's rough it is going to get the job done just like it has done with this guitar stand here and it doesn't take a whole lot of filament to make this either so all in all if you're planning on printing with some nylon whether it's carbon fiber or easy nylon or glass filled nylon or whatever the heck else they got out there just know that the finished product is going to be so satisfying but it may take some trial and error and some frustration before you can really get everything the way that you really want it to be because even if your settings are just completely fine like i think my settings were really really good with this these parts came out great but they just failed sometimes and other times they didn't why i don't know it's just what it does freaking nylon but anyway that is going to do it for this video let me know down in the comments if you tried printing nylon anything before in your experience with that so i'll leave links to both these filaments as well as the uh, stl file for this guitar stand if you are interested in it down in the description Thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.